more excited to share with you that today we have amazing experts that's going to spend around an hour and a half with you and show you exactly how these fraudsters are faking your ID, how these fraudsters are faking your passport, how these fraudsters are faking your identity to go and apply for a bank, and how can you as a fraud examiners be able to identify this document to know are these actually genuine documents? Are they real documents or they are fake documents? How can you figure out and know if these documents you are examining, they are actually manipulated? What are the red flags that you need to look at? And this presentation is going to be amazing for you. We are going to be sharing the slides with you. And we have with us Mr. Hussam, and he is a global expert in these issues related to fraudster schemes, related to manipulating documents and files and data. Thank you, Iyad, and uh, good evening to all who, are, who joined us today for this training. Uh, also, thank you, Iyad, for this uh, amazing introduction. Hopefully, I can manage some of those uh, tricks you have done, inshallah. Uh, I, today, I'll be talking about passports and ID documents fraud. And this is a very important uh, topic for fraud professionals for people from audit, risk management, police, law enforcement agencies. Uh, it's very simple. Uh, passports and ID documents fraud, it's, an, it's, it's a huge problem for not just financial institutions, any institutions that deals with uh, passports and ID uh, documents. Uh, first, we'll have an introduction about what is a document security? How can we make sure a document is secured enough to prevent alteration and manipulation and tampering by an external party. And this includes some security features that should be incorporated in any ID or in any uh, passports. After going through, we will go through so many uh, security features. However, uh, I want to emphasize, you know, this is not a technical training. It's not technical. Today, you will learn some skills, actually how you can apply those skills using merely your five senses. Not a total five, but at least you will be using a touch will, will, uh, and your eyes. Uh, of course, you need to be observant, you need to be uh, sharp, you need to be, uh, pay attention to uh, details. Being observant is, is actually, it's a must for someone who's going through uh, documents uh, for verification and validation of those documents if they are genuine, forged, or uh, counterfeit. After going through the security features, we will go into a, a, a fraud. And we have three major types of fraud related to passports or ID documents. We have counterfeits, we have forgeries, and we have impersonation, or as we call them, imposters. And we will see all the details related to three types. Then we will go into another area related to stolen blanks, which refers to stolen passports, but they are blank. Also, how do you check visit visas or resident visas? We will look into a fantasy will camouflage uh, passports also. And also, I'll show you lots of cases and examples. Actually, the whole presentation is about cases and examples. And hopefully, together, we will come out with uh, some skills you can apply uh, later. Also, you need to understand how can I verify and inspect a document. You cannot have half an hour, if you are working in a bank, in a branch, for example, someone is approaching you to open an account <clears throat> or cash a check or apply for whatsoever transaction in the bank, usually they will present their ID or passports or their credentials. But this should actually, you should learn how to do this in seconds. I'm not talking about five seconds, but minimum or absolutely, we're not talking about minutes here. Uh, now banks actually are competing to grab more customers and a service with well, speed of service is one component of that. However, those skills, the more you practice, the more you learn more. Today, we give you the keys. It's up to you to, to walk into that uh, room. Today, some, key, some tools, uh, some techniques, uh, information, and some knowledge. And then we will look into how we can detect counterfeits, how can we detect 
طبعا الكاونتر فيتس وي ديتكت ذيم ثرو سيرتن سكيورتي فيتشر وي وي كومبير ذوز فيتشرز وذ وات شود ذا دوكيومنت هاف از فور ذا فورس دوكيومنت ات ويل بي ا ليتل بيت هاردر تاسك بيكوز وير ديلينج وذ جينيون دوكيومنت ذات هاز بين تامبرد وذ اور التيرد So we're talking about a genuine passport. However, there are some traces of tampering somewhere. Your task is to find those areas. And when we talk about documents, for example, like a passport, we know there is where your photo is. We call this biodata page. 80% of tampering happens there in that specific page. Then we have your photo or image in that page. 90% of tampering in this page actually happens to your photo. Then the rest of the passport and the other information in the same bio database like date of birth, date of expiry, date of issuance, uh, and other details. Then the imposters actually, we're talking about one person who's using someone else ID, which is genuine 100%. There's no tampering, no counterfeiting whatsoever. So your task here is to match the ID with the person in front of you. And we have two sides of this. We have technical profiling, which is matching the ID with the person, and we have tactical profiling. A technical, where you actually you look at the ID and, and the photo and that ID, and you match it with the person. A tactical profiling, when you cannot have a judgment and you start asking some questions using information from the same uh, document. Then we have, as I mentioned earlier, we have some checklist where we can use in every uh, situation. As I mentioned earlier, documents should be secured to prevent them from being copied or altered or tampered with. Those secured features exist in every secure document, ID cards, you name it, even salary certificates, uh, certificate of incorporation, uh, passport, uh, visa, even in bank notes, checks from banks, all those are secure documents that have certain level of security feature. However, since passports enable you to travel from one country to another, it, they are more secure compared to checks, for example, bank checks, or compared to driving license or an ID uh, document. How to verify a document? It's very simple. When someone presents a document to you, an ID document, you need to make sure that this is genuine. Number one, number two, the person who's handing the document or the ID is actually the rightful owner of this document. So how can you do this? How can you check, verify, and screen documents when they are presented to you? You need to have two things, the necessary knowledge, information, and the right tools, including skills, and how to apply those skills. If you have both those, you will be able to confirm authenticity of any document. You will make a judgment. Yes, it's genuine. No, it's not genuine. And also, you will be able to identify forgeries, which is document, uh, genuine document that has received some tampering, or counterfeits, which are filled from scratch, or imposters, two people look alike, and someone A is using B document. And as I mentioned earlier, our training today is not technical. So don't worry about you know, a technical, no, it's not actually. Those are skills you can apply and definitely I'm sure some of you tomorrow will, will be trying those skills uh, at work or at home. Type. Before we start, how many security features are incorporated in passports and ID documents? How, how much do you think? 10, 20, 100, 50, 70, etc. Uh, I combined a list of here. You can see all of those are security features used in IDs and passports. Then we have another page. And also those, all of those are security features that are used in passports. You will not find one passport that combine every single security feature. However, some passports are way secure than others. And there is a level of security in each passport. It depends how much money the government is investing in that specific uh, ID or card or, or passports. And some passports are more secure than uh, others. 
However, the list I've shown you here, we have 88 different security feature, but the list is way longer than this. We'll start with the basic security features in any ID or passport document. And this relates to the material where the passports of the, or the ID card is made from. Oh, initially, usually documents were made out of paper. Paper based on, from cotton, not from wood. There is a reason for that. Because paper, our paper-based documents, which are made from cotton, they can incorporate lots of security documents in, in, in those. Now we have other documents, ID documents and passports, where some of the pages actually are hard plastic or polycarbonate. You will see this a lot uh, uh, with, with the new passports coming out or some of mainly European countries, they have those hard plastic passports. The features we will, be, we will be looking at related to the material where the passport is made from are the ultraviolet light, the watermarks and security fibers and some other moving as we call them security features. Those moving or actually changing and evolving security features were a response to the advancement in technology related to scanning, printing, color copying, and what we see every single day, there is a new technology coming out which makes, uh, makes the life of a criminal or a fraudster or a forger way much easier. Ultraviolet light, uh, I'm sure some of you are familiar with this. If you see this device I'm pointing with my mouse here in the right, that is an ultraviolet tool mainly used in, on desks or in uh, service counters in institutions. And on the left side, this is a portable UV lamp. Usually some of the financial institutions give those to their salespeople who are actually meeting the customers to uh, verify their uh, credentials, documents, IDs, etc., etc. How, how do we do, uh, do this? We have the device here, the light, just like if you can see the 100 US dollar bill here or the euro on the left side, they are placed under the light and we will see a reaction. Here we can see on the left side, one passports or how several components of the passport are reacting in different colors. You, this is under UV light. In normal view, we wouldn't be see any of this. On the right side here, we, side, we can see a European visa here. And you can see the letters EUR, EUR, EUR in different colors, yellow and green, actually yellow greenish here. And if you just focus, because later this we need this information in the counterfeiting uh, or in the counterfeits uh, how to uh, detect them always the passports will show certain areas with different colors but the rest of the passport or the visa will be dark you can see here in EUR it's shining it's in different color but if you look at the background it's dark also if you go down here we see what we call security fibers those are tiny fibers. They are embedded in, in, the, in the paper itself of the document during the manufacturing process. One condition, they must be random. No way they can share the same pattern in every page. If that's the case, it's fake. It's not genuine. And we will see some examples. So those fibers, actually secret fibers, we can see them in naked eye in normal colors, but under UV, they will show in different colors, like here you can see red and blue. Another example from UK passport here, you can see those multicolored fibers in blue and red. This is normal view here, yani under normal light. Under UV, they will totally change colors into those different colors. Of course, frosters and forgerers, they try to imitate those through coloring them on the fake or the counterfeit documents. But the reaction under UV light will be different. And we will see also examples of this. 
here we can see what's here on the left side you can see the passport under normal view and those brown areas here and here and here the same areas under UV will show in different green color again uh, here if you look carefully you will see and only those areas are in colors but the rest of the document is dark remember this another example over a print Iceland passport on the left side here we can see under normal view nothing is there under UV we can see the logo and the word here and here in yellow but the rest of the passport is dark also some uh, some passports will have elimination plastic uh, overlay that covers the bio data page this plastic here you can see this plastic actually has some uv reaction for under uv you will see certain areas in different colors usually in new passwords they try and you know, all uv crosses the face of the person under uv you will see and you know the reaction will cross the face of the person to make substitution of the photo very hard even security thread you know in, in bank notes for example if you hold any bank note against light you will transmitted light you will see a security thread going through this uh, bank note the same happens in passwords like this one also a security thread now are actually they are um, reacting to an ultraviolet light and they will show in different colors i will show you one case of a super counterfeit passport and actually one of the detection point in that case was the way how this security thread reacted to the ultraviolet here also uh, you know all passports I'll show you a passport here. If you can see, the passports are combined through stitching. There is a thread here that combines those, all those pages together. This is a thread in the passport, which usually exists in this area, as we can see here in the, in the slide. On the left side, this is how the thread looks like under normal light. And the UV also, it reacts to ultraviolet uh, light. There is a reason behind this. If this passport was subject to forgery, supposedly they wanted to add a page to this passport. Supposedly we have passport A, passport B. Passport B has a visa to a certain country. So we remove it from passport B, the page, then we add it to passport uh, A. To be able to add the page, you need to dismantle the passport. How? Removing stitching. Then you add the visa page into uh, the passport and you restitch again. When you restitch again, the outcome of the thread will not show in ultraviolet colors under UV lamp, and that is a uh, detection. This is the reason why it, it, it reacts to ultraviolet lights. Watermark. Maybe this is the biggest security, actually, protection related to documents. Every document that is paper-based, a, a watermark. A watermark is very simple. If I, if you walk into any grocery in any country in the world, and a very old man inside, and you hand over a large denomination note directly, he will grab the note and he will. I'll show you how it happens. He will grab the note and directly he will look and try to see the watermark. The presence of the watermark is an indication of the genuine uh, banknote. However, because it's used in every paper-based document, this is the first security feature that forgerers try to imitate. And there are like 10 techniques to do that. Some of those techniques are successful, but not all of them. The, the idea here, and no, you need to learn how I can make sure this is a genuine watermark or an imitated one. And I'll put you to the test later. I'll show you four or five examples of, of uh, watermarks and you need to verify, you will verify, not me, and tell me whether they are genuine or not. So what's a watermark? A watermark here, I'll show you. Th those are different pages from different passports. Here, for example, we can see a watermark here. This, this text, you can see here, it's light. 
and here it's dark. The wording itself is, is dark here and it's light. Watermark is merely variety in the thickness of the paper. This is why during the manufacturing process, this is why we see, for example, here, light areas compared to dark areas. If you look at this shape here, you can see the same shape has dark areas and light areas. If you are looking at the human face, remember the rule. If, if a human face is the watermark, it should look human. What does that mean? I look at the eyes, the nose, the mouth, and see if they are 3D, three-dimensional effect, which indicates it's more like a living human through the watermark. Later also, we will see, you know, compared to a genuine watermark, a, a counterfeit watermark will be more flat or drawn or sometimes they use colors or they simply paint it or just print it on the fake document or fake banknote. But I need to get back for the, we have a, a golden rule here. If I am looking at a document, an ID document, a passport, whatever document that is secured by a watermark, I should remember this golden rule. If I put this document or banknote or ID or check under UV lamp just like this, this is a UV lamp, okay? This is a UV lamp. If I put, for example, here, and I'm not sure if you can see the watermark or not. If I put it on this device under UV and the watermark shows it's fake. So a watermark should never appear under UV light. And we will see examples also, those are different types here. We have a single tone watermark, which is either dark or uh, bright. We have a DU tone watermark. You can see here we have dark and uh, light in the same uh, passports. Or here, the shape actually combines both dark and uh, light. As I mentioned earlier, related to a human face, you must, you must make sure it looks a human mainly through the eyes and nose and mouth 3D effect. Another security uh, feature in passport, especially in passport, so ID documents, we have different security printing techniques, but the most used one actually is intaglio printing. What is intaglio printing? Intaglio printing is one type of security printing, uh, printing sorry, that leave results in the ink having a raised feeling. So if you look at number one here, you can see the fingers going through raised items just to actually, just to show you what's the feeling of a intaglio print. If you look at number two here, you can see the ink is thicker in certain areas. So if, if I'm grabbing a passport and I open the first cover, if you go in the borders of this passport, you can feel the raised printing especially here in this area, okay? Some passports and especially visit visas that are sticked on passports, also they will have some integrity printing in certain areas. This is uh, merely an example of an integrity printing. Another example here, you can see the shape on the left and under the red here, circle, you can see actually, you don't need even to feel, you can see it's raised a printing, but be careful. In tag new printing, also counterfeiters and forgers, they try to imitate it through punching the document from the back with a metal device. They will make it look like it's a raised printing while actually it's more like perforation or pressing with a uh, metal device. A latent image is an excellent technique that will help you verify quickly any ID document. Well, nowadays, 90%, if not even 95% of all documents, ID cards, driving license, passports, uh, checks, secure documents, they have this security feature, a latent image. As the name implies, latent means hidden. Latent image is an image we can see only if there is an integral printing in the device. I'll show you an example here. I'll show you with my own passport. In the biodata page here, 
I'll be grabbing the document on the eye level. See the eye level. Then I will look. Then I start tilting the document and looking. This is how I see intaglio, uh, sorry, latent image. I'll show you some examples. So we have the eye here of the person who's looking. We have the document here, and there is a source of light. So what we do is we put it in the eye level, then we start tilting slowly until we manage to see this picture. Here, for example, this is a page from a UK passport, and we choose this area. Here, number one, if you can see here, number one, this is the document. We are looking on the document on the eye level without tilting. Then when we start tilting the document like this, you can see the letters U and K are showing. This is the latent image. There is another security feature here. If you are, if you looked carefully, you will notice also the color here has changed here. It's uh, here we can see dark blue, and this is uh, purple, and here it became, as you can see, light brown here. So in addition to UK showing as two letters, also the color changed here. Another example here from a Poland passport, though this is the same area, depending on which angle you are looking at the source of light, you will see the letters RP one slight or be here once dark. No way a counterfeit document contains a latent image because a pre-requirement for a latent image is having integral printing. Here, another example, another passport. You can see this area here with the rectangle, the red one. And again, here, when we put in the eye level, and we start looking just like this, tilting slowly, slowly under light, you will see the letters RKS showing here. Also, if you notice here, you can see the letters RKS dark and here they are light. Another example in this passport, why I'm showing different uh, passports, this is just to give you the idea and you know, every single passport has a latent image. How can I find it if I don't know the passport? Very simple. Look at the biodata page and put it in the eye level or start tilting slowly and focus on that area. If there is a latent image, you will be able to see the, uh, the new image that is showing because you are tilting the passport. Here we can see this area RKS shown after also looking and tilting. And also here we can see them in different uh, colors. Uh, gold blocking is another security features specifically for passports. What is gold blocking? This is gold blocking. You can see the emblem here. This is actually is made from genuine gold leaves pressed hard thermally against the cover of the passports. And they are used as a security feature because when someone presents a passport to me and I look at the date of issue, which is one or two months ago, and the gold blocking is weird out. Definitely something is not right about that uh, passport. It doesn't mean it's fake or counterfeit. No, it means it requires more additional screening and uh, verification. So this is the gold blocking. However, we will see later. If you look carefully, you can see the shape or this emblem is very clean. Clean, which means no distortion on the outside borders of the shape. You can see even the letters here, they are clean, no, no extras around them, beneath them, or in front or after them. Another example here, a French passport cover. Again, a beautiful emblem here. You can see no extras at all. And if you, look, if you take any line inside here, you can follow it to the end because it's very clear, very clean, and the borders are well maintained and no distortions also here. Another security features in the passports is specifically made from hard plastic or polycarbonate is the ghost image. What is a ghost image? A ghost image is an image that we can see here, for example, and this image usually will be, will show when you are looking through transmitted light directly through the page of the passport. 
secondary ghost image and this actually how it was produced through laser perforation another example here we have another ghost image but only it will show if you tilt the passport or the document only if you tilt it will show Another security feature which is used now even in medication, in any item that is expensive, they use holograms to actually protect it. Holograms, they are expensive, not very expensive, but they are expensive. And now they are incorporated in most of the bank notes, checks, ID documents, uh, resident visa, passports, those valuable documents that needs to be secured. We have 2D holograms, we have 3D holograms. What's the difference? A 2D hologram is actually 2D, two-dimensional hologram. It has only color and structure changes, while 3D images will, will be there and they will change into different three or four uh, colors. Here you can see an example. Those are the old credit cards, if you can see here, Visa and MasterCard. This is an industrial hologram for other products. Here, if you look at the Canadian dollar, you can see on the left side, the hologram in reaction, how it reacts. If you look carefully, if you look at the marble leaf, this one, the yellow one, yellow, blue, red, and another color. When you tilt the document or the banknote, it will change colors, shapes also. Colors, shapes, or images. It will show it has this 3D effect. Identity gram is actually a more advanced form of hologram. Usually it will react in, in, in multiple areas in the passport like this German passports. It reacts on the, here, the photo of the holder of the passports, a ghost image, the emblem here of, the, uh, of Germany. And if you look at those two lines, we call those MRZ, machine readable zone. Those machine readable zone, two lines. You can see on top of them in green, also a UV reaction here. You can see also, this is multi-level of uh, security. We have another security feature, which is lamination. And if you remember old passports, maybe 10, 15 years back, uh, when, when they used to laminate them using plastic, the ordinary plastic we used to know. What's lamination? It's very simple. The biodata page, which is this page, the page that has your photo in it, okay? The biodata page will have a layer of, pla of plastic that covers the whole page. It's very, very, why they do it? Simply to protect the information and data that is contained in that specific page. Usually, this is the most important page in the passport. You have your photo there and you have all your personal details. This is why it's of great importance. This uh, page should be well protected. El el elimination makes sure you know, any tampering that happens with this page actually will show some effects, will show some tampering results, and that will enable us to detect this uh, tampering. We have a standard lamination, which is pure plastic without any addition, or we have an extra lamination. For example, if you look carefully at the photo near the arrow, you can see hologram reaction when you tilt the page also. So here, the plastic contains hologram images. Here you can see, uh, you can read uh, passports and some logos and emblems. Here, lamination actually has an imposed here you can see the crown, an imposed seal that is embodied or incorporated in the lamination. Sometimes they include microprint. Microprint is a small text words. You can spot them with naked eye, but no way you can read them unless you need a magnifying glass. Some lamination will also have a multicolored a fluorescence reaction, which means if you put this page or document under UV, it will show a UV reaction. <clears throat> uh, 
This is another example of, of lamin lamination with UV feature. As you can see under UV, it will show different uh, colors. We have another security feature, which is very important. Unfortunately, this one, they were counterfeiters and forgers were able to imitate simply because some of the inks are used are available internationally in the markets and then in some countries. However, what is this security feature? Look at this passport. You can see here uh, uh, an image of a lady. If we are looking just like this, normal view at the passport, just like this, we will see here the green color of that specific lady. When you tilt the document like this, the color will directly shift to blue. So this is why we call it color shifting ink. It was green with tilting, it will turn into a blue. Another example here on top of the lady head here, you can see the letters BEL with the background. This is how we see it. Also when you tilt the passports, the color will shift from purple into uh, almost gold color. How can I find this security feature in a passport? Very simple. Open the bio data page and on the eye level, tilt slowly, you will see a reflection. That is the color shifting ink. Another example here, but here we have a, a color shifting actually is a three times gold, green, and yellow here. Not two times, but three times. Uh, we all know the US dollar and the 100 here when you grab the note and you just tilt it, it will change here. You can see the reaction, how the color change from green into blue or dark, dark green. Now we, we see how they make sure a null photo is not tampered with, with through photograph authentication. Here, photograph authentication very simple. Your photo in the bio database needs to be protected. We can add seals, by the way, uh, this technique is very old and still it's going, but it's evolving. In the past, we used to have two types of, of, uh, of stamps, either ink with stamp or a dry embossed stamp. Here, this is an example of the ink stamp. How it protects the photo? You will see part of the stamp is on the photo and the rest on the rest of the page. So. If you try to remove this page and add a new one, you need to redraw the stamp on the new one. This is the first type. Second type will impose the dry seal. You can see it here also. It's a cross crossing on the uh, photo and on the rest of the document. Type. How can we verify if this is genuine or not? If, if it's a rounded seal uh, or stamp, it should be well rounded. Those points at the, at the outside borders should have an equal pressure points on them. And we can tell if we look carefully in those. Always in stamps, you must check for spelling mistakes. Always you must check for spelling mistakes in imposed or in with uh, ink stamps. Another example is this one, uh, which is an imposed uh, seal. Most of the documents now have something called anti-scan, anti-copy pattern. What's that? It's a feature that is added to uh, secure documents to actually uh, protect them from copying. If copying or scanning happens, something will show in the outcome. I, I'll show you an example. Here, we have a passport here, this page on the left side. Now, there are certain feature here, uh, features here which you cannot see with naked eye. However, if you copy or scan, for example, if I remember correctly, up to 150 dBi, the outcome will show the letters here, copy IE, which is copy in a, in a certain language. You can see here, 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 here. So if I am copying or scanning this device and I'm using the outcome, it will, tell that this uh, the, uh, document has been subject to uh, copying. Type. What is our checklist? Now with all those security features, we look at the type of paper that is used uh, for manufacturing the, the document. High quality security paper. And we have two conditions. It should have low base floor sense level. What does that mean? Remember we said 
if you put in a passport uh, page under UV, certain areas will show in different colors, but the rest of the passport will be dark, not bright. Number two, we also check in watermarks. Watermarks should never react under UV, and only we can see them through transmitted light. We look for a latent image, which is a result from intaglio printing. In intaglio printing, we can feel it with our fingers. Latent image, we can uh, see it through on the eye level and start tilting slowly. The holograms, the same. We need to move the document and start looking. We need to see different shape, different colors, different images with 3D effect. Elimination, which is, as I mentioned earlier, a layer of plastic that is covering the value data page. Also, a photo authentication relates to the stamps, either dry or wet stamps. <clears throat> now we come to ID documents of road and what are the techniques used in those. Very simple. We have three main types of fraud. The first one is counterfeits. Second is forgery and imposters. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> Sorry. What's the difference between counterfeiting, forgery, and impersonation? A counterfeit document is a document that is built by a fraudster or a criminal or a counterfeiter. It's built from scratch, which means they build their own document. However, it resembles a document that is issued by the government. This is a counterfeit. And on a scale, how we, which one is easier to detect? A counterfeit will be the easiest to detect. A forgery relates to a genuine issued document by a government agency. And this document has been altered or tampered or manipulated. Again, if you remember, I mentioned in a passport, for example, 80% of tampering will happen in the bio data page where your photo is. Within the same page, 90% of tampering will take place on the photo, usually replacing the photo, substituting the photo with another photo. In imposters or in impersonation, two people look similar, close to each other. And a is using B passport without changing any details. It, he will use it as is. And he will try to, for example, go to, the, to a bank, financial institutions, or travel with it. And usually, if I am doing this, I need to memorize the details on the passports if I, for, if I am asked in the airport. However, this can be defeated by, defeated by fraud, professionals, or law enforcement. There are certain tricks that are used during a security profile, a profiling the, uh, the uh, tactical side, which is asking questions, not direct questions, definitely not direct questions, from the uh, uh, information contained in the document. And we will see some examples later. Uh, who use fraudulent documents? Criminals, fraudsters intending immigrants or refugees and terrorists also. Those are, of course, definitely criminals and organized criminal groups. They, they use them and they sell them. But let's say the end user might be someone who's trying to defraud someone through assuming their identity, someone who's trying to defraud a financial institution, someone who's trying to immigrate to another country. Why they use fraudulent document? For an illegal pur purpose. Regardless of to conceal an identity, assume an identity, <clears throat> someone might travel to country X and later he wants to travel to another country, which, which have, I mean, which, which doesn't uh, approve any people who traveled to that specific country earlier. So they will try to actually uh, do something to their immigration history. Uh, history. As I mentioned earlier, uh, we have three types, counterfeiting, impersonation, or imposters, and forgers. For forgery, mainly it's, it would be photograph or image substitution. What's the difference between a photograph and an image in a passport? In old passports, they used to have a physical photo attached to them, glued and later laminated. Now, almost all passports have an image integrated in the paper itself. Now, most of the passports. So, 
either photograph or image substitution or page substitution. Uh, you add a page or you remove a page from the passwords. Uh, in the bio data page, alteration of personal details. You want to extend the validity of your passports. You want to change your date of birth. You want to play with some numbers within the bio data page. So you alter those pages. Alteration or manipulation or tampering with stamps, entry stamps or exit stamps or visas. Fraudulent, uh, fraudulently obtained and stolen blank documents. Those relate to blank passports, and we will see some examples. Blank passports are very simple. They are stolen from a government agency. They are genuine 100%. However, they are blank. There's no information typed in them. So they are blank. They will actually type the information in those and add the pictures. They are genuine, but they are stolen blanks in initially. Those are... Uh, fake documents, passports, actually. Just to show you the importance of being vigilant, uh, terrorists use fake and counterfeit and false documents. This terrorist was one of the Paris suicide bombers some years ago, and actually later in investigation, they found out you know, he was registered uh, in Greece uh, through entering the country with a forged passport as a refugee. There was a, a wave of lots of refugees entered. So he was admitted as a refugee using a uh, forged passport. And this is his actually details and some prints for the uh, police. Here we can see uh, this picture actually from Greece. And Greece, because it's a crossing point, uh, uh, let's say the industry of, of forgery of passport there was booming at a certain time, and this is what was confiscated in one raid by El Police in uh, Greece. Here you can see <clears throat> fake blank residence permits, thousands of them. And if you look carefully, you will see there are holograms in them. Actually, they were imported at that time. Uh, I remember they were imported from China as uh, uh, they were ordered from China and they, uh, they arrived in Greece and they were actually found when the police raided the place. Uh, this is a reporter who was working between Syria and Turkey and Iraq, and he managed to buy a, a fake Syrian passport, an ID card, and a driving license in a southern uh, Turkey city, uh, paying 2,000 US dollars. If you look carefully, and that is his photo, but the details here belong to someone else, someone who's deceased, a Syrian citizen who was deceased. So they assumed his identity and those were actually the documents he managed to uh, get. Uh, another case, uh, someone in Bangkok in Thailand, he was called, they used to call him the doctor. He was so good in doing this and there was some quality in the passwords uh, he was producing and selling for 3,500 US dollar, and they contained all types of nationalities. But Alhamdulillah, he was caught, and now he's serving uh, time. This is part of the workshop that where he used to, you can see here the plates he was using and other machines used for uh, producing El passports. Now we come to action, El counterfeits. Now try to remember the notes I mentioned earlier, the golden rules, uh, and some of the tips I shared with you to be able to detect their counterfeits. All of those passports are counterfeit actually, and they were seized in country X, let's say. In Thailand, they sell the documents in the street. And maybe those are merely just for, um, yeah, for playing or for whatsoever reason, however, uh, nobody needs to go to Thailand to buy because unfortunately now everybody can buy documents online and there are hundreds of, of, of websites online who are, you can get your PhD, you can get whatever uh, ID document and a driving license online, uh, which is something horrible. However, it does exist and uh, people should be aware of uh, this type of risk and they should actually um, put together ways how this can be uh, mitigated. As I mentioned earlier, counterfeits are built from scratch. The quality of counterfeit can be different. It can be super counterfeit. It can be lazy counterfeit. 
and it can be amateur counterfeit. Based on how much time, what type of technology you are using, how much are you willing to invest uh, in that specific uh, document. Uh, however, the good thing is, to be able to detect counterfeits, you don't have to know the original document so you compare the suspicious one with it. Why is that? Every single document has certain security feature. As a minimum, all passports have the minimum, let's say 10, 14 security features. So they do exist in all documents. We need to verify, we don't have to verify 14, but we cannot just use one or two. We need to, especially if there's any red flag in that specific document. <clears throat> the first thing we do is the watermarks. Remember the golden rule, we said, a watermark should never react under UV. Number two, if it's, it represents a human face, for example, it should, this face should look human. We look at the eyes, nose, and the 3D effect. <clears throat> also, genuine watermark will have light areas or dark areas. Light areas or dark areas. This relates to how thin is the area in that specific page. Again, you can see in green here, a genuine watermark should never react to ultraviolet light. But a chemically simulated watermark is likely to show under UV light. Let's see. Here, we have on the left side, a Greece a passport from Greece, and it definitely shows a beautiful watermark. Very well defined. We can see light areas, dark areas, compared to a counterfeit passports, which even here, they didn't even bother to add a watermark. So there is no whatsoever watermark here. Right. This is our first question. And the question is, which one do you think is genuine? Is it number one or number two? It's, this is a watermark. Please answer in the chat. If you answer with one, you say, no, this is genuine. If you answer with two, you, so, you say, you know, this is genuine. And we'll see how you, uh, you will do with this. And I'll give you this, uh, one minute so you can. Uh... So, uh, yeah, I don't see the chat if you. Yeah, most of them, they are saying between one and two, they are really confused, so. <laughs> uh, good, good. Because now, uh, now uh, type. my first question, if you look at the two faces, which one is more human? Look at the eye, this eye, and compare it to this eye. Look at the nose, and compare it to this nose. Look at the mouth, and compare it to this mouth. Look at the area here, and compare it to this area. Which one looks more having 3D effect? compared to a flat effect. A flat has no 3D effect. Type. We have two ways to work this out. I can say directly, number one or two, or we can use the test. Let's put them under UV. If they show under UV, they are fake. If they don't show, they are genuine. Here, we know, we can tell in number one, is genuine compared to number two. However, some people still may be skeptical and they say, mm, how would I know? Type, let's put both under UV. If it shows under UV, it's fake. So we put both under UV. Which one showed under UV? Number two. So number two is actually chemically simulated image here. And this is why number two is counterfeit. It's a fake. Hopefully things are better now. Time. Another one here. We have number one and number two. Which one do you think is genuine? Which one do you think is fake? Or counterfeit, to be precise. Remember, you need in the water uh, mark light areas or dark areas. Light areas or dark areas. If you have a UV, it will definitely help you. Right. Also, I don't know what are the answers. I will... are, are saying it's number two. Number two is genuine. Yes. Ah, very nice. Bravo. 
number two is actually genuine because number one showed under UV and hello, nice. How about this one? This represents a castle. This watermark represents a castle. Hello. Look at the drawing. Which one is more flat compared to the other? Which one has 3D effect? 3D effect shows clearly if there are shadows. But again, we will do the test of a UV test. But I need also be able to answer, please, if one or two. This time they are in between. Some they are saying one, some they are saying two. They are confused. Type. Uh, my advice, look at this door, this door, this door, and here on top on the roof, and compare them with this one. However, however, if you are still confused, simply put it under UV. Which one showed under UV? Here. The one on the right, which is number two. So number two is a counterfeit. This tells you how valuable this machine is. It's very, very cheap, by the way. This device, I don't know, 10, 20 dollars, that's it, even less. But it's very effective. Uh, here, remember also, we said in a genuine document, certain areas like those fibers are showing, but the rest will be dark. Here in a counterfeit, it will be very bright. Reaction under UV, it will be very bright. Supposedly, we look at though this combination of documents. We have multiple documents, banknotes, passports, everything. Can we tell directly if they are genuine or fake? Actually, nobody can, even the experts. You cannot tell merely by looking. So we choose to put them under UV. And this was the reaction. Here, we see different reactions. The bright reaction indicates a counterfeit. The dark reaction with some UV reaction indicates actually some uh, genuine passport. Here we put them, you can see in the right side, the counterfeits which have bright reaction and in the left side, the dark one which has, uh, the genuine which has dark reaction. Another example, ID card Germany. Here they didn't even bother to imitate the UV so it looks very bright compared to, you can see the UV reaction here in this document. If you look at this case, we have two Portuguese passports, the one on the left, which is genuine, the one on the right, which is uh, a counterfeit. However, for an, in a normal view, I mean, some people might be uh, confused. So if you look on the left and the right, there are differences. However, if we put both under UV, it will be way better for you because directly you'll have a decision. We put both under UV here. What do we see? We can see in the UV reaction boats, very beautiful boats here, similar boats, same color here. And also we can see reaction in certain areas, but the rest of the passport here and the image and the background is dark. Go to the right side, you can see different color in boats. You can see bright areas here, here, here. And the most important, you can see a biodata page where the photo is should never show a bright background. How it means this photo actually was, th this is a counterfeit passport. It was built and constructed and this photo was used to do it. Here on the left side, we can see dark background compared to this one. There are other details here, but those are very uh, uh, clear in the UV reaction and how Bright is the reaction of the bio, the, the background of the photo and the rest of the passport. Remember, we spoke about security fibers and we, uh, I mentioned uh, uh, security fibers should be randomly scattered in every passport. Here we have an example of a counterfeit passport. We have two different pages from a Greek passport. If you look here, 15 and 13. But when you look at the security fibers, you will find you know, they are in the same place. Here, no two pages in a passport should have the same pattern of security fibers. If they are, uh, if they are the same, it's definitely it's a counterfeit. And this is an example. Even the holograms, we have a genuine hologram in the left and a counterfeit hologram in the right. Remember holograms, different shapes, different colors, different images. And it should show 3D 
effect. Here, on the, you can see the counterfeit here. First of all, this is merely a, a generic hologram means it ha doesn't have all the details. Here, it's very generic and it has only the word genuine flashy on it. That's it, it keeps moving. But it's, it doesn't have the same components of the genuine uh, one. We mentioned earlier intaglio print. If you look at number one and two, which one do you think is genuine? One or two? This time they are saying all of them number one. Type good, number one. They, they are improving. After, after this session, I think they are going to go check all the currency they have, all the documents they have to ensure all of them are genuine. <laughs> Type good, good. How about this one? We have two backgrounds here. You have number one, you have number, actually, um, actually the answer is here already. <laughs> the answer is here already. However, here we can see the uh, background uh, printing in this area. We can see solid fine lines. What does that mean? Here, every line you can even follow it up to the end. And you can see that they call it pressed uh, background printing. Here, you all, all you see is colored dots, colored dots, random dots of the here, and this is a characteristic of available home printers, specifically inkjet printers. The, here, number one, they use security printing. Security printing is very expensive. Number one, number two, it's only available for government and certain agencies uh, within the government. S but here you can see, you know, this is a result of a commercial uh, printing. Here, top or uh, the green or the red, which one's genuine? Now, let's call this number one, number two. I think it shows clearly here, if you look carefully, when you have a document you need to verify or you have doubts and you are comparing it, always pick a random letter or number and con uh, directly compare it to another one. For example, look at this B and this B. This B will define borders, clean borders, no distortions here, different colors, not well rounded here, and the borders are not clean. If you look at this line, this is a micro print line. On top we can see, here, on top we can see the letters, you can read them, this is micro print here, merely they are dots. Another example on the left and the right here, take my advice. If you are ever verifying a document or a passport or a letterhead, and you see the background composed of colored dots like this, definitely this is something suspicious. If you look at the, this document and you can see the borders here are interacting with each other, there is no clear borders between them, definitely something is not right. Even here, color dots compared to this number. You can see even the microprint inside the number which is absent here. Uh, we're still talking about the quality and the color of uh, printing. Here you can look at the background of the passport, number one and number two. Here you can see we have those, we, as we call them honeycomb cells here in the passport, compared to the absence here in this passport, which is a counterfeit. Which one do you think? One or two is the genuine? When you compare, for example, I will look at the text and see which one is more clear. I look at this shape, pyramid, and see the lines. Make sure I can follow every line to the end. Here, you will be lost. Look at the, this area, borders. You can see the lines here. In number two, you cannot see anything. Definitely number one is genuine. Even in those two documents here. If you look carefully here, you can see, can you see this embossed dry seal? Here. Compared to the absence of it here. Uh, one of the things always, I said earlier, check spelling mistakes in stamps and in seals. Those seals actually had some spelling mistakes. Here we can see public bonds, which doesn't even exist. It should read public funds. Here we can see channel travel. It should read channel tunnel rather than channel 
travel. The gold blocking I mentioned earlier, and here you can see one example of a counterfeit passport compared to a genuine one. I mean, you don't have to be an expert to tell you know, the horrible quality of this emblem compared to this one. Here, every line you can continue with this line, follow it to the end. You can even read the text or the letters here. Here, you cannot do anything. Here, this is a flashy, cheap gold color compared to this one. Here, so you can see it uh, better. And this is how actually, just to make sure you, you, you look carefully at the stamp and how it looks. This is our counterfeit checklist, uh, poor quality of gold blocking. We, there might be some tampering uh, uh, or uh, results of uh, suspicious uh, feeling, uh, poor quality of uh, paper, integrity will be imitated just like seen in the quality of printing, poor quality of printing, and UV and ultraviolet reaction is imitated. Actually, either it's absent totally or it's uh, poor quality. Uh, my advice, definitely use the UV light. It will be make your life easier and it will help you as we've seen also, especially with water uh, marks. And now I will show you, uh, uh, I'm not sure, it'll, yeah, before you continue, you know, um, I, I remember interesting case that, you know, one uh, individual in China, they created the uh, fake ID card for them to do certain purposes. And the officer was able to uncover their fraud because of something very simple. When he looked at the card uh, in the place where they have, you know, the, the, uh, the date of birth, the person who actually wrote on top of the date of birth, rather than saying date of birth, he said birthday. And usually no government will say it's birthday. They say usually it's date of birth. So that was the key points for him without looking at it under UV light or anything. He immediately said this card is fake because no one will mention birthday. They should mention the date of birth. So sometimes you need to use common sense when you look at documents. If you don't have all the tools, you know, sometimes, you know, just by looking at what is written in this document, you can identify something is wrong. Yes. The example you gave actually is being observant, number one. Number two, uh, as I mentioned earlier, for tactical profiling, um, some of the, but I mean, uh, this one was an easy case in terms of, uh, you know, the, the officer figured out, you know, the passport should never contain a birthday rather than date of birth. Uh, however, uh, it serves as an example of all, also how low IQ some, some criminals are with, with, the, with, the, with this type of mistakes. Uh, and, uh, on contrary to the example you gave, uh, Yad, I'll show you a super counterfeit uh, passport. This is a passport that was caught in a European country. And this is the inside page. Actually, uh, this information is available uh, online. So it's not uh, something that is a secret or something. This is the inside page. And we'll go through security features. This is the genuine and this is the counterfeit. If you look carefully, the color is similar, but this one is more dark, the red color. If you look at the borders here, those borders in the genuine are more clean compared to this. But remember also, and we are talking at this size, which is like less than one centimeter. So you don't have a magnifier with you, you will be looking with your naked eye. Also the background print here is in a gray color compared to this almost green color. Here, it takes itself, as I mentioned earlier, Big one letter and compare it to another. And the genuine, let's take a U and compare it to this U. Look at the printing here, defects in the lower and right area. And the finishing, the good finishing here, also in the genuine one. A serial number, totally different color. This one looks more like bold font compared to this uh, color. El, el, el security thread, this is, those are both fake security and those are both uh, portions from the uh, counterfeit passports. A security thread is a continuous thread that goes from one side to another. It never was a strips built on each other. Like here, you can see those are strips and you can see also they are not aligned. How the number one. Number two, when you look at the sec security fibers here, we notice they are the same color like the security thread, which might indicate and no, they use the same ink. And here, when you compare them, see the genuine thread compared to this one, 
Now the surprise. Remember what I said about the random security fibers. When they checked all pages of the passport, it turned out all have the same location. So the same pattern was existing in every single page of that passport, which no way it can happen in a genuine passport. Also here we can see some differences, but I'll, and watermark, honestly, it was, I mean, it was a good quality in, in, in here compared to that. But again, if it was put under UV test, this password would have been uh, discovered. And then they found this visa on the same counterfeit passport. Hello, what do you think of this visa? Is it genuine or fraudulent? I mean, merely by looking at it. Can you mention why? Why can you think in your opinion why? What what is the, the thing that would make you believe it's fake? All of you, you are saying it's fake or genuine, but can you tell us why? What what uh, are the indication? Some saying it's not clear. Uh, some say the date are fake. The stamp is not correct. Okay. Uh, okay, let me comment on this. Just for the record. Never assume because it's a counterfeit passport and no, the visa is counterfeit. The, actually, in this case, the passport was counterfeit, but the visa was genuine. However, there was, it was a forged visa. So actually what we are looking at now is a genuine visa that has been tampered with. Here, normal view, I mean, if I don't have it in my hand and there are no spelling mistakes, no defects in the photo, you can hardly tell. However, if you look carefully, let's put it under UV. This is the visa. Maybe this will make your life easier. But let's, let's put it under UV. When it was put under UV, there was something here very suspicious. How come an EUR here look very nice, well maintained, same color, same font, same uh, space, aligned? Then when, when we look at his forehead, we can see the L E, the L U, the R here, horrible printing. See, not a clean letters. Then why the E, uh, R, sorry, why the R has two colors? Here it's green while here it's yellow. And where is this area that is missing? Then look carefully on the lines on, on the photo, the red lines. They are not well connected here. So what do you think? What happened here? What was the scenario? And they say the photo changed? I'll show you what happened. Actually, the photo was replaced here when they, when they looked with a, with a magnifier or actually a microscope in this case, they saw and know, you can see the traces of cutting here, see? which means the original photo of the original holder of the visa was removed through cutting. Then they brought this guy photo, which matches the counterfeit passport photo, okay? And they glue it. However, here you can see some overcutting. You can see here, you can see those lines here also. You can see overcutting. And if you look carefully, lines are not matching here. They are not well connected. So. It's true, the photo was replaced and what they did here, they added this photo. Then they tried to imitate the UV reaction on the forehead and the red lines, so it goes well, but it was uncovered, which is good. Then they added all those fake stamps to the counterfeit passports. All those fake stamps were added to the, and as you can see, different uh, stamps representing different Unfortunately, UV inks, which show UV under uh, UV lamp, are sold commercially. They are sold worldwide. Not just that, even an optical variable ink, which changes the color, also they are sold. And, and forgery, here your task is a little bit harder compared to counterfeits, because you are dealing with a genuine document and you are looking for traces of tampering, especially if you buy your data uh, page. Uh, Again, we said the forged passports, usually number one is 
الفوتو سبستيوشن نمبر 2 از البيت سبستيوشن نمبر 3 الكيميكال التريشن اور الكيميكال اند اولسو ات كان بي نوت جاست كيميكال ثرو سكرابينج يوزنج ا ميتال ديفايس تو ايميت اور اوميت سم انفورميشن اور ريبليس ات دوز ار ذا areas where uh, passwords can be subject to uh, forgery. The first thing, when someone hands over a passport to you, generally, this is what you should do if you work in an institution that deals with passports. If someone is handing me a passport, I'll show you here. If you are handling me a passport, I'm a customer service, I'm a cashier, I'm an officer in the airport, I'm a customs officer, and you are handing me the passports, directly I will take it, and I will look at this area here. This is the outside of the booklet in the back side. I will look for any, uh, for any red flags of this end paper. If there are any creases here or wrinkles, that's, that's uh, the first point of uh, actually being suspicious. Then directly, I'll flip it to the other side and also I look from this side. Then I go to the bio data page i'll be looking at the password and sorry I'll, I'll put it back i'll be looking at the password and looking at the guy the person in front of me and doing the matching so when you see those wrinkles on the outside of the password you can see this here traces of wrinkles and even here also this is not a good indication something what does that mean? What does it indicate to us the presence of wrinkles on the outside cover of the passport? It means this passport was subject to dismantling. Dismantling means they removed the stitching, now they have loose paper. They either added a page from another document or they removed the page from here. Then what they did, they assembled again through stitching. This, when they dismantled the passport, they needed to break the pages so they can remove them. This is why wrinkles will Show. Had one example. One of the techniques you can use also to verify if the pages are aligned or not when, when someone is handing over directly look at this angle here. If the pages look like in the slide here, you can see they are misaligned. That's another indicator of poor assembly of the passports, which is another point of being suspicious about these documents. When you have misaligned pages like this, this is definitely an indicator of poor assembly of the document, which might indicate this passport was dismantled earlier. Here you can see it also better. In a passport, all pages should be aligned. No smaller or bigger page. All they should exactly 100% they should uh, align. Even here, if you look at the backside near the covers, this area, you can see, you know, 100% they are aligned compared to here, the pages. You can see some pages are higher than other pages. A stitching, I mentioned earlier, stitching is the way they combine the pages together to make passwords. If I open the first page in a passport, I look at the stitching and I see, here, what do we see? We, we see loose holes. Sometimes you see vacant holes. Loose holes indicate this passport was dismantled, they added another page, then they stitched again. Because of using the same holes multiple times for stitching, they became loose. So sometimes the page they are bringing from another passport, the holes in it does not match those holes, so you will see vacant holes. This, so loose holes or vacant is another indication this passport has been tampered with. Here you can see the traces here of the tampering in the area. One thing, when you ever grab a passport presented to you to verify, make sure this passport uh, has not lost any page, which means you need to make sure all pages are there. If it's 48 pages, 48 pages should be there. If it's 60, 60 should be there. Uh, this is our checklist for page substitution. Uh, Definitely, we start with the cover, uh, the outside cover, and the inside cover, and looking at the stitching, as I mentioned earlier. <clears throat> uh, one of the things, 
if you are ever looking in a passport, especially if you buy data page, you find dirt or sakh in Arabic or splash of ink on this page, don't assume you know, this is an innocent, innocent mistake. Definitely something is not right about the passport. If I am a forger trying to tamper with the bio data page, trying to remove a date, scrap a date, add something, then by mistake, unfortunately, I punched the page or did something, I will try, I will try my best to hide this mistake or what I was doing tampering with the password. How do I do this? Either through adding dirt or through a splashed ink, then I can claim and you know the ink film over the passport. So the presence of a uh, ink or dirt on a page in a passport, especially by data page, is an indication of something not right. Well, actually, this person or passport should be subject to more scrutiny and screening and investigation. Uh, a photograph will image substitution. Definitely, we will not discuss how you can substitute an image or photograph. This will be only for courses for police or law enforcement agencies. However, here we will talk about some red flags that might uh, trigger your suspicion and know uh, this passport has been subject to uh, tampering. For example, as I mentioned earlier, there are so many ways they can replace or substitute uh, the photo of the in the bio data page. Uh, now technology is making it more hard actually for criminals or fraudsters to do that. But still, they are trying, and actually we have new techniques every single day. If I am looking at a passport like this, if you look at the photo, and I'm using this is a torchlight. I this is what I will do. I'll just look with an angle, 90 degrees angle, and I will look at the bio data page specifically in the photo. And I see those wrinkles. You can see the wrinkles here near the arrows. Wrinkles, wrinkles, and also here wrinkles. This is directly indication. The lamination has been removed. They added the photo and they reapplied the lamination. When they did it by hand, this is, they couldn't do it like a machine. This is why we will see wrinkles in different areas. Number one, number two, Actually, this photo looks larger than the usual photo. Sometimes they cannot remove the, the photo they want to change, for so they bring a bigger photo for the new person and actually put it on top of the old uh, photo. Sometimes we look from the back side of the passport, we see bumps here and traces of cutting. You can see here, traces of cutting. That might indicate they cut it from the back to, to remove the photo and insert actually a new one. Uh, this is a passport, a very old passport. However, we are using this as an example. Uh, here, normal view. It's a Pakistani passport. Uh, normal view. Everything is nice. We put it under UV. We can see UV lines are covering the photo. So this is 100% genuine passport. We had another passport. The same thing. Very nice. Stamps, everything. Then we put under UV. This is what we see. The lines are going under the photo rather than on the photo, which means the photo was definitely replaced. Here, this is a, a Chinese passport. If you are looking at the photo, forget this area. Look here, under the finger. This is how you will see the passport with this photo. Then I will think, type, there should be here some hologram, this hologram and this and this. Why it's not reacting? Then I will notice and know what they did here, they merely printed the photo of a new person on the lam plastic, lamination plastic, and they applied it on the same page. This is why here you can see the printed face on a piece of plastic, and they put it on top of the original one. And here, when they remove the plastic, you can, can see the genuine holograms reacting. This is a digital image. You cannot remove it, but you can cover it. Here you can see actually traces of replacing a photo. This is an actual photo, not an image. And they replaced it. You can see traces also here or here. There are lots of traces here. This is another example of replace. This is a horrible forgery. This is a horrible forgery. Horrible in terms of, I mean, here. All of those points 
one, two, three, four, five, six are indication of forgery. Definitely here to summarize this, this person, this area belongs to someone different. The shoulders and the neck belong to A while the face belongs to B. So they cut the photo and they add it here. So when there are so many mistakes in this passport, it cannot go through any, I mean, borders or even an institution. However, it was a case to share with you. Here, is this a genuine image or altered? You can see, I think this is an American passport and we can see the lady here. So we cannot see the eyes, they are, <clears throat> they are covered, but is this genuine or an altered passport? Merely by looking here. They are saying it's altered. Uh, they are saying it's altered. Actually, at the end of the day, this is an ID fraud course, so. <laughs> Actually, it's an altered passport. Here, we can see, this is how it looks, if it was presented to you, more reddish face, and here, the face is more red, here, you can see, then, it turned out actually this is the original lady and here you can see if you look carefully here what we did we enlarged the photo look at number one you can see the eye you can see the eyebrow here you can see the nose you can see the mouth the the face of the new lady was actually printed on a plastic then it was covered on the passport so the passport looked like this but the face here is not the actual holder of the passport here this is the actual lady while this is the actually the fraudster which you can see here the eyes and nose and mouth on top of the old passport again this passport will not show a correct hologram reaction and if there was uv it will show different because it's covered with a plastic even with the new passports that are made from a hard plastic here you can see the, how the eye looks in a genuine passport and how in a forged passport it looks like merely dots. It can be black or colored uh, dots. Here, what they did, they substituted a page. Rather than removing the whole page here, they just glue it on an existed page. So it starts peeling off and you can see the traces of peeling here. Again, we've seen, I think, this before holes that indicate that a page was added or removed from this uh, passport. Again, we have a page substitution. This is how a genuine passport looks like. And this is the added page, how it looks like. If we look carefully here, you can see even the spelling is different. The colors are different. There are many difference between the two photos. Uh, again, this is another red flag of tampering when we are looking at the photo in a passport. Now, there's one challenge. When you are looking at the passport, the photo is like three by five centimeters. You don't have the luxury of enlarging this photo one meter by one meter. So honestly, you need to be very observant or sharp eye to be able to spot those differences. We can see here some dirty traces around the photo and some tampering with the plastic. Uh, that's an interesting uh, thing, uh, you know, in Dubai, they are using Dubai font for so many documents. So uh, one of the cases that happened that one person was actually submitting a document and they look at it and they saw, oh, the, the font is used is actually Dubai font, but the documents is old. That was before the time when they created Dubai ah, okay, font. Okay, okay. Yeah, they were nice. How, how come that, you know, this document was in Dubai font, but actually the font was not created at that time? Ah, okay, okay. Yeah, and at the time of the at the time of the document, and our font was not even invented. Exactly. Right. I mentioned we about. Ah. Sorry, I don't want to stop you. They are enjoying the session, but we have another ten minutes. If you would like to go over the important things, ten fifteen right. minutes is over. Uh, actually, we are still in forgery. I want to talk about alteration related to mechanical or chemical. Mechanical or chemical, both. We have a certain text we want to remove. We want to replace with something. Uh, new. Uh, unfortunately for criminals, documents now, secure documents, they do have certain security feature specifically designed to uncover an alteration. Okay? Uh, 
some of the red flags related to, let, let me show you some examples, then we can talk about the red flags. We will see here the mechanical, using a device to sc uh, scrap actually rubbing or abrasion or uh, scrapping uh, from the vapor surface, some text or some uh, numbers. Here, you can see for example, 1983. If you look carefully at the three and partially the eight here, you can see a different color. And here also you can see some traces. If you are looking at the document on the eye level here like this, you can see some fibers showing because they scrapped it. Some fibers will be pointing up because they have uh, scrapped it. Had one example. This is the um, time. Let's see how good you are. We have a forged old Japanese passport. It's a forged passport. Hala, can you tell the three areas of tampering in this passport to make your life easier? I put some numbers here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There are only three areas that has been subject to tampering. Please mention in the chat the three numbers you think has tampering. Mention yeah, three, number, uh, uh, four, five, six, four, five, six. Uh, some they are saying five, uh, uh, eight, seven. Most of them they are saying five and six. Five and six they have issues. Okay, let's see. Actually, four, five, six. Here, the male was a female, and you can see here what we call turfing. Turfing, removing fibers from another area, then dumping them here. In 170, you can see it's scrapped here. And in 52 actually was scrapped. Here, it will look way more clear to you. You can see here how they managed to cover the FE, the female, and here how they work with the numbers, and here F and uh, two. Here, a new technique called turfing. What they do is they will cut the whole number from another area and just to glue it in the area they want. You can see eight will four here. If you look carefully, they are totally cut from the background and added here. Maybe from another similar document. Here you can see, and here they do merge in the background, unfortunately, which is in a way, and this might be actually deceiving. Compared to this one, a six will, uh, will five. Here, again, this is the same, uh, also turfing. Another example here in 1967 here, you can see that it was a four and maybe a one here and how they changed it into 67. Here, traces of tampering, which are nicely shown. You can see them uh, directly. Here, this is very interesting because this is what you will see with the naked eye. Unfortunately, using the infrared, you will see, and you know, there is a totally different text here. But with the naked eye, it will show, okay. Uh, using the infrared, it will show different. The last thing, uh, some people might, might say, type, what if I have a, a, an e-passport that has a chip? How can this passport be forged? Uh, what happened, in, or, or actually what happens, some uh, fraudsters or criminals, what they do is, they will replace the digital image. With it, just like we've seen using plastic and uh, drawn pictures or printed pictures. Then they will come to the chip that has the biometric data on it and they will damage it or remove it. So if you arrive in the airport, they will not be able to actually, the machine will be able to read the chip and they can uh, match the information on their system with the information on the chip. So this might work in the past, but now there are actually law enforcement agencies or passport agencies. Now they have more solution which can detect this, but this is happening and you should be uh, aware of it. Uh, let me show you. El, uh, can, can you tell us before yeah. you continue about the new challenge where you know, they are moving the visa to be on the mobile devices so that they are not documents anymore? Uh, now, uh, yeah, actually, most of the solutions related to security now are totally dependent on high tech in terms of biometrics. Every, every agency or government agency, they cannot resort just to one option. They will have multiple options that 
fits multiple people from different backgrounds. And those solutions need to be actually tested, verified before this. Challenges of what's happening, every day we see something new. I remember when uh, when chip cars were released and there was EMV uh, with deadline, everybody thought, you know, chip cars related to the credit cards, those are the solution, no more skimming will be happening. Actually, at that time, people thought that. But then it turned out, you know, even the chip in the credit card, that is a chip enabled, okay, it cannot be copied the chip itself, but the information can be taken from the chip and actually downloaded into a magnetic strip card and can be used. So there are solutions. Uh, unfortunately, if you have a wall that is 10 feet, criminals will bring a ladder that is 15 feet until you figure out what you can do to uh, overcome uh, this. So there are challenges. There are uh, new technologies that overcome those uh, challenges. We, we are, uh, we, I mean, we are new E. New E, they are the country that adopts all the latest technology uh, solutions for everything. And they are scoring number one also in everything. Uh, uh, definitely, I am, I am uh, positive. You know, uh, those type of solutions <clears throat> used here are the latest and they are tested and up to the challenge uh, in UAE. Um, uh, what time is it now? I think, I, think, uh, I, think, uh. I think we are two hours, but the delegates, they are saying, please continue. They are really enjoying it. They said this is the best session they attended ever in their life. So, so uh, um, uh, for the delegate who would like to leave, you can leave, you can watch the rest on YouTube. But Mr. Uh, Hussam, please continue because the delegates are really having uh, enjoyment. They are bringing their tea and they are enjoying it uh, very much. Thank you for the tea and we will go on. <laughs> right. uh, and, uh, an alteration checklist is the page document particularly wrinkled. Wrinkled means specifically the pages inside means some effort has been done there to scrap something. Look at the page at an angle. Are there any raised fibers? Just like uh, I mentioned, they grab the password just like this under light and you look. Are there any fibers anywhere? If, it, if there are fibers, it means they were scrapped. Are certain areas with the page thinner when the page is viewed with a transmitted light? It indicates also uh, scrapping. Stolen blanks are genuine blanks issued by a government. However, they are stolen and organized criminal group or terrorist organization actually had access to them and they start using them. This is an example of a genuine UK passport. And on the right side, we have a stolen blank. Hello, both are genuine. Material-wise, both are genuine. But the one on the left, G, this one was printed by the government. The one on the right, which is S, it was a blank passport. Some um, some people got access to it and they printed it using their printing machines. How can we tell if you look at the S format and shape here, it is different from this one. And there are other areas, but this is merely an example. This is another interesting case of a blank stolen. Had an Italian passport. It was stolen. Then one day it seems this guy tried to travel it's, uh, in it. And, uh, you know, no, dual, I mean, countries will have months, for example, in French or Italian and English, and English mainly, and another language. So here, they looked at the month date of birth, then date of issue and date of expiry. They noticed here, the month actually is in Italian month, our Italian language and English. But here, why the months are January and January, January and January. Then they looked at the, the names of the months in Italian language. So January actually reads Gennaio. I don't know how to spell it in Italian, but this is what I am reading, Gennaio. So here we are looking at the number one and two, we can see Gen and Jan, that's fine. But here they forgot actually to replace Jan with, with Jin and here Jan with Jin. And this was actually an indicator. Maybe this is a similar uh, example to uh, the guy from China with the birthday. 
I, I thought Italian, they are good in doing this with their mafia. This no. disappointed me. <laughs> Allah, you see, it's good. You know, they are. I, I told you, the IQ level is not very high for all uh, criminals, and this is good for us, so we can actually spot those uh, tiny mistakes and uh, mistakes, and we can detect the forgeries will will counterfeits. This is another example of also uh, a stolen uh, blank. Uh, one thing uh, we are close to actually. One thing I, I, I put at the end, so people can use it uh, effectively. Uh, everyone hears of the term MRZ, machine readable zone. What's a machine readable zone? Those two lines are called MRZ, machine readable zone. Then time. What about this one? This area up to the lines. This area we call it visual inspection zone. So visual inspection zone, this area. Machine readable zone, this area. For MRZ, this should be read, read by the machines. For this area, we need to visually inspect those, this area and the details included in them. Hello, there is a tiny trick here, and hopefully you keep this in mind. This is a British passport. The, I think this is the latest British passports. You can see whatever information here should be in those two lines. And since we prepared this one already, Please check what's up and down. We start with P and P. Here, passport number, passport number. Here. All the details up are down. Everything up is down. So, whatever information is here should be actually included here. Hello. Someone might say how they construct this. Al-Ikaw has uh, <clears throat> actually it's a very long process it's a very technical complicated uh, process uh, but you need to know you know those two lines have certain security features in addition to containing 44 characters each or digits there is a certain thing you need to know only those type of letters and formats should exist on the mrz see the numbers the letters and this code. Only this type of font and shape, color, uh, letters with numbers should exist on the film machine readable zone. Specifically, a three and four. For the three to, be, to make your life easier, it should have a flat top here. Flat top means a straight line, not like an arc or half a circle. For the four, it should be an open four here near the, the arrow, not a closed four. Keep this in mind. This is a fake passport. Look at the four here, and look at the three here. The four is closed, and the three is not flat, right? Look at this passport. The four is closed, and the three also is not too flat. Here. Yeah. See? Uh, El visas, resident visa, visit visa, they are definitely secure documents, just like the passports, and they are all also open to fraud. They have the same security features that are in other documents, and they should be treated the same in terms of level of protection and verification and actually how to verify them. Uh, the same security features we've seen apply on a resident and visit visas. However, I wanted to add this rib cuts, which is a security feature that, a feature that exists in visas. You can see here the letters E, U. Hala, rib, what, what is a rib cut? The sticker contains rib cuts. Those have certain weak points on purpose. If I try to remove this sticker of the visa from passport A and put it on passport B, when I try to remove it, it will be, it will be uh, teared apart. It will be bits and pieces, so I cannot actually reapply it somewhere uh, else. Uh, visa checklist, always, always, always cross-check the bio data page on the visa with the passport. 
make sure it belongs to the same person. And the other, other tips are similar to what you've seen before, but the last one is very important. Check for damage to UV safeguards. So you don't have that case of that passport. Uh, imposter, which is uh, <clears throat> our last section, actually two people, they look similar, uh, similar sorry, but A is using B uh, passport to travel, to go to the bank, to do whatsoever. So the challenge here for the person who's doing the verification, and no, I am having the passport in my hand and this person is standing there. I want to make sure that person is the rightful owner and holder of this document. And actually it's a, it's a challenge and it, it includes both technical, tactical profiling, uh, technical relates to matching the IT with the person, tactical actually through uh, questioning. And uh, we will not take much time on uh, this one, uh, but usually what do we do? Uh, I'll come back to those uh, later. Generally, when we look at someone face, there are only three shapes of heads and faces in the whole world. Round, squared, and oval. Round, square, and oval. You would never see someone with a, with a triangle head, okay? Uh, what we do is we divide the faces into three parts. If you look at the left and the right side, here you can see from the eyes and top, from the eyes and tip of nose and the lower part. So one, two, three. One, two, three. Hala, if you look carefully here, you can see this face is more square compared to this oval. Here, why? Because the jaw bones here, jaw bones are bigger in this case compared to those here. So for initially you need to define uh, and make sure and know what's the shape of the person so I can reflect this while matching the photo. Another example, here, one, two, three, compared to one, two, three. You can see a different shape here. Then we go into it details. This is the overall shape of the face. And again, is it oval, is it round, or is it square? Number one. Number two, we look at the relationships. The eyes, the nose, mouth, and the ears. It's more like a triangle. It's more like a triangle. Again, eyes, nose, mouth, ears. Eyes, nose, mouth, ears. Okay? Relationships, what does that mean? I look at the eyes and see what's their relationship to the line of the ears. And then to the mouth. The position of these features in the face in relation to each other is very important. How do the eyes align with the ears? Are they lower or upper or equal? Sometimes when I am doing the matching between the ID and the person, I'll be confused. So sometimes I use certain tools available in the human face. I look at the area between the nose, the tip of the nose, and the upper uh, lip, or the lower lip and the chin here, and compare them to the person. Again, I mentioned earlier the mouth and their relation with the uh, ears. Type. How, how can we uh, check and verify imposters? And uh, the first one, this is actually mainly for uh, government agencies. However, we need to look at, of course, we need to match the person with the ID. How do we do this? First of all, one of the tricks that's been used is talk to the person in the language of the same ID. If the password is in Spanish, try to speak in the same language if you are capable of that. You look at the passport and you look at the date of birth. Time. I have a question for you. If I have suspicion about Mr. X, he is standing in front of me and I look at the passport. The passport says our date of birth indicates he might be 55 years of old. But I look at him, he's like more or less. So, what do you think? If I had any suspicion, I should ask him about the date of birth or age and why.
age or date of birth? Time, I'll answer. Actually, if you ask him about the date of birth, chances he already memorized it because it's in the passport. If you ask about the age, uh, he will start calculating the age based on the date of birth that is mentioned in the document, or he might confu get confused with his own actually date of birth, and he start doing the calculation. And if you ask someone about their age and their pose, that's not a good sign. Definitely there's something not uh, right. Here, we're talking about the estimated age when you look at the person, the height, any visible marks. A signature on the passport, I mean, in our region, Arab region, we don't sign our passport. Not all countries sign their passport. So if it's there, you can use it. You can ask the person to sign the, same, the signature on the passport. But if it's there, if it's not, you cannot use it. Then we do the uh, te technical profiling. We start matching the person from top and we go down from here forehead and we go up to the chin and we go through every and each detail of course i'm not saying you start staring at the verse no you do it quickly but you go, start from up and you go uh, down uh, one of the things important here is actually red flags related to the body language if the person who's presenting the document has some red flags for example he's over nervous he's sweating he avoids eye contact. He is shaking. He is um, posing for questions. Um, some of those red flags might indicate actually the person is an imposter and he's using someone else's uh, identity. Now, I think this is the last exam. Oh, sorry, test. Then we can uh, roll this out. Type. Okay. Now, what I will do is I will show you. I will show you two pictures. Tell me, is it the same person or not? So, if you, I'll show you two pictures for two people. If it's same person, answer with one. If it's two, your answer means it's not the same person. Okay? Yalla, let's go. Is this the same person? All of them saying yes, it is. Type good. How about this person? Most of same, no, they are not the same person. Actually, she is the same before or after makeup. And how about this lady? Yeah, I'm confused sometimes. I don't look like the photo in my passport. <laughs> yeah, but your bone structure, your ears, and bone structure, uh, always don't use a removals, the hair, the hair and the color of eye, those can be changed or removed. Don't use them. Start from the top of the head and go down. For example, uh, and I removed uh, lots of slides related to the matching because how we look at the eyes, uh, this will take us four hours or five hours. Uh, but here we can look at the eyes in terms of size, shape, and how close they are or how they are apart and the eyebrows also, how their alignment with the ears. Then we look at the nose, the length of the nose, the size of the nose, the nostrils. Then we look at the mouth, its shape, its size, the teeth, if we can see them. And the ears also, we use them. Definitely we must use the ears if we can see them because they are among the very few organs that actually they are the same all your life. After a certain age, they are the same. They might get, uh, more fatty, when you get old, they contain more fat, size-wise, but shape will be the same, okay? So in this case, uh, my advice to you, do, never use only the eyes, use two or three areas in the face and compare them. Hella here you can use, for example, eyes, a chin with space. Eyes, chin, and the spaces. Most of them saying they are not the same person. They are not the same, correct? How about those? Asian people, I mean, there is a challenge how to identify Japanese, Chinese, Thai, Filipino, 
Korean. It's a, there is there is a challenge, but there are certain differences uh, that exist related in height, in bone structure, in eyes. However, sometimes it can be very confusing. So, are they the same or not? Most of them, they are saying they are not not the same. They are not the same. How about those? Everyone saying it's not the same. Not the same. How about those? Also, everyone saying it's not the same. Actually, this is a very interesting case because definitely the lady here looks like the mother of this young lady. And it turned out this lady used the passport of this young lady to fly. So this lady was traveling and she used this passport. If you look at the date of birth here, it says 1986. Does this lady really looks like she was born? I don't know which year this case was caught, which will give us exactly how old she was at that time. But this is also an imposter uh, case here. You can see the passport and the date of birth. How about this guy? Do you see uh, government, they are using more artificial intelligence and software for them to be able to, to answer this question uh, compared to uh, for us doing it, uh, you know, uh, manually by trying to understand this process? You mean facial recognition? Uh, yeah. Yes. Are, are they uh, doing anything to recognize if this is the same person by looking and examining? Yeah, of everything? course. There are, I mean, there are solutions in the markets and most of the countries are using a facial recognition uh, software. And actually, even after Corona, with people putting masks, still they updated their software and it can identify people even while <clears throat> using their masks. So it does exist. However, our audience, I mean, they are coming from uh, different backgrounds. We have maybe bankers, we have auditors, uh, we have uh, police, we have uh, government agencies, we have uh, fraud examiners, we have uh, risk people, we have compliance people. And we have people who are interested in, uh, in attending. I mean, we're talking about people coming from so many different backgrounds. Uh, some of those, they do this in their institutions manually. I doubt, you know, uh, all, all institutions will invest actually in facial recognition uh, software. Definitely, it's, uh, it is expensive. It is an, it's a huge investment. So, people will still be using this manual way, okay? And the government, uh, of course, um, they are utilizing the best software in the market for keeping security and for safeguarding the interest of people and the institutions, etc., etc. But software, yes, there is. And it's based on a certain logarithm with artificial intelligence. And actually you can see, <clears throat> as I mentioned earlier, uh, with the coronavirus challenge, you know, even with people with their masks on, still the software was capable of identifying uh, people. Here we're talking about how to do it face-to-face, uh, -face, how to do it face-to-face. -face. But are there, uh, are there solutions? Yes, they are. There are definitely in the market solutions. I, I watch a very interesting uh, documentary about the British government. They did a study for the individuals who are in the embassies and who are in the actual immigration offices. And they discovered that more than 50% of the time, the individuals who got experience with so many years doing this oh. exercise manually, they failed in figuring out if this is the uh, actual person or not. And then they went and they implemented a system to help them actually assess this. But they discover also fraudsters, they were able to cheat the system because, mm. the, for example, they will come and in that way they will recognize this is the actual person, but the, the photo they will submit is not matching them. So then uh. they, added, they need to, ma to match the person with the document with the photo they submit. Otherwise, someone else will travel in their place. But then they added another level of security where they say when you submit a photo of you, they will take your photo, not only match it with you, they will match it with their database to see is it matching someone else in their database so they will identify actually the actual person that's on yeah. the photo. 
I think I read I read about something like this. I think I read about I read something uh, like this. Uh, now again, technology serves us better in giving more capabilities for institutions for detection. But um, for example, as I said, uh, and we're doing this manual. Someone who's facing you, and supposedly I'm a cashier. I and someone presenting a, a check for two hundred fifty thousand U.S. dollars with an ID. I need to take a decision, yes or no, to cash the check or not. Or if I am in the airport, if I say yes, they will board the plane. If I say no, they will go back. So you will do it at a certain stage, face to face. And that, if your institution have a software and it's capable 100% to verify is he the same person or not, definitely that's good. But our own institutions are willing to invest, uh, I mean, huge amounts of money uh, for this software if it can be uh, done maybe up to 90% accurate through a face-to-face. -face, uh, this is up to them actually to judge. We have software, we can do it. Uh, through training by enabling people to have the skills. Uh, I need to mention one thing. I mean, we've done this for like uh, two hours. Uh, I don't think, you know, uh, you will be an, a, a forensic examiner related to uh, ID fraud with passwords after two hours training. Uh, here, you t as I mentioned earlier, I give, I give you the keys. Then uh, it's up to you. Uh, to go and open the door and research more, read more, attend more training. Uh, there are, I mean, we, we squeezed a large amount of information and uh, like uh, if this was a classroom training, we will do an exercise for everything I went through. We will do it, everything we did, but uh, because we are doing this uh, virtually and I'm trying my best to show what, uh, what I can. And the idea is, uh, it's a challenging uh, for, uh, well, ID fraud. It's, it's a huge challenge. Uh, don't think of it on the personal level because if you look at the numbers of well, ACFE or even other numbers related to uh, cyber crime, we are talking about billions of billions uh, of losses for financial institutions and for customers uh, due to this type of fraud. Uh, ID fraud it can have an paper and online also, and it's easier to do it online because you are sitting somewhere maybe 15,000 kilometers away from me and you are assuming my identity uh, through my online banking service or through my app application. And you are making lots of money because of those victims who didn't have any education or awareness or they are careless or they don't do updates. They, don't, they are not well informed of security challenges relating to them. Uh, the idea is, <clears throat> and you try our best to enlighten people make them more aware of, of, of the challenges and actually how they can minimize losses with the minimum cost. But they, there are other highly advanced uh, technologies that can um, help in actually matching persons with documents. Exactly. This is a, there's a case happened a couple of years ago in UAE where one person went to the bank to obtain a loan. And of course, the bank will ask for an actual Emirates ID. So he provided him the Emirates ID with the microchip inside, they inserted, they looked at the photo is matching the person, they looked at the information, they verify with him, and then he requested a loan. And then they approved his loan and they give him the money. And after that, after one week, his uh, uncle came to him and he said, why did you take a loan under my name? So what he did, because they are working in family business, he took the ID of the uncle and he went to the bank and he looks like his uncle. So the bank, because they, uh, you know, they verify everything and he looks the same, he, he confirmed the information, so they give him the loan. <laughs> so you can see what can happen if the person in the bank will not have the ability to actually recognize these basics. Well, this is why, yani, this is why training is very important and no people will have uh, uh, new skills they can apply at work and they can limit the financial loss or the damage uh, reputational wise and the financial loss to their customers. I mean, when you are involved in a fraudulent uh, transaction or a case, just imagine the cost of investigation, time, reputation, uh, money, effort, the teams working in investigation, how much time uh, on the institution. Better if you enable this person, your cashier or your uh, staff, to be able to actually work 
uh, better with the right skills and uh, tune their skills in dealing with uh, fraudulent documents and uh, ID cards or other areas. But this is at least the, so you can function very well in your area in the institution. <clears throat> Uh, sorry to stop you. What, what do you see happening with the blockchain where they are saying all our uh, you know, actual paper documents are going to go over blockchain so we will have digital identity and in that way it's impossible for anyone to actually change the information or use it? Actually, yeah, this, is, uh, this has been published a long time ago. The blockchain, uh, I'm not an expert in the, in the blockchain and in fintech, but it has been published a long time ago uh, there is no uh, capability, technical wise, of someone actually al altering or tampering with or manipulating the record in that central uh, record registry. So technical wise is not applicable. However, because I am up to date with, with the cyber crime and what's happening in the area of cyber crime, uh, I learned and know never say it will never happen because honestly you don't know you don't know what's coming in the future people uh, think you know we did this we did that we are immune then some, uh, certain vulnerability showed up i'll share with you one case of fraud one day and a banker in a bank received an email from a customer who's asking about fixed deposit rates the customer who sent the email attached a word document with that email and he said, I want to check about fixed rate, uh, interest rates in your bank. Details are attached in the uh, attachment, which is a Word document. And the banker, seeing an attachment as a Word document, didn't feel you know, it's uh, risky. So simply, he actually, when he tried to open it, there was a pop-up message that says, enable macros, yes or no. And he said yes. Uh, what happened, you know, this document had a certain, the specific version of that document, has of office actually has a certain vulnerability related to enabling uh, macros, which downloaded a backdoor at his machine. Then he infected the whole network around 100 machines. And cyber criminals, what they did after the infection happened, they have access to their machines. They installed a, a certain software which records your machine for a whole month. It records your screen, what you do for a whole 30 days. Every single day, they would watch what the staff are doing. Then after 30 days, they logged in using the credentials of the bank staff, and they used three techniques to actually stealing money from the bank. The total loss for 30 banks was 1 billion US dollar. 1 billion, that's 1,000 million. And simply because <coughs> there was a certain vulnerability, the staff didn't assume or he know about it. My point is, uh, you think you, know, you patch this vulnerability, something else will come out. And only we know, I mean, we work in the fraud uh, prevention, okay? You will know about the cases that happened. Not the new, there are trends, there are predictions for the future. But definitely, if you are reading about something online, it happened in the past three or six months, somewhere in the world. And that's lessons learned. We learn from what's happening in the world and we try to actually educate the people we deal with, our clients or institutions we deal with, so not to be victimized by, uh, by this technique, new modes of brandy. We spread awareness through, I mean, through courses, through sharing, networking, events, etc. Thank you and for so the just for the delegates who are asking which is the case it's called carbonac uh, exactly uh, exactly carbonac you can google it just carbonac attack yeah it's a very interesting case yeah and actually Car since you mentioned this carbonac this case happened some time ago there is a new carbonac which again you can see it with more complicated actually capabilities unfortunately uh, Type. Uh, yeah, do, uh, what do you think? No, because it's. Uh... Uh, we we can take their opinion. Do you want to continue? I think they they are okay. Uh, by the way, anyone who would like to leave, they can leave. We have uh, more than six hundred attending you live, so <laughs> so they are happy and they are staying. Type okay. Type, uh, can we go ahead for another ten fifteen minutes? Is okay. 
they 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 say uh, 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 continue they are happy طيب اوكي actually now we will reach at this guy so uh, is he the same and actually he is not how about this lady is she the same she is the same she grew older this lady she is the same how about this guy i want you to answer one and two one two is this the same person one means yes two means no they are in between they are not sure <laughs> طيب, I, i'll give you one hint look at the space between the lower lip and the chin lower lip and the chin and the upper lip and the nose someone said maybe that he did a surgery uh, a cosmetic surgery uh, now we will come to cosmetic surgery <laughs> now we will come to cosmetic surgery and if i am trying to defraud the bank out of 100,000 us dollars i will not spend 500,000 on a cosmetic surgery unless i am targeting with maybe a billion or more uh, Actually, those are the differences here we can see, but if you used only the tool, it will be easier for you. Is this the same person? I think the answer will be yes, she is the same person. How about this one? Type. He is the same person. He is the same person. How about this person? Do you know, just, just to mention something uh, about the similarity, do you know there is a very interesting case happened to uh, Charlie Chaplin. So Charlie oh. Chaplin, uh, uh, he was acting in a movie and they were trying to get an extra for him because he need to do a very dangerous uh, stunt. So, uh, uh, do you know, he, his agent went to look for someone who looked exactly like Charlie Chaplin. So they went and they put an advertisement in the news and then they did an interview with so many. So Charlie Chaplin want to see if they are good or not. So he applied as he is a contestant and he was part of you know, the process. And at the end, even he is Charlie Chaplin, they didn't hire him and he looks exactly like himself. And then he discovered why, because actually the producer hired one guy that someone paid money to him to hire him. He looks like Charlie Chaplin. So okay. he was so Charlie Chaplin say, how come they didn't hire me and it's me? And he discovered that actually his staff are corrupted. So it's a very interesting case to see what, what can happen sometimes when someone is trying to look for similarity. Uh, okay, okay, nice. Well, a nice, interesting case. Type. Let's see. And I think with this lady, then we move to the last uh, portion. How about this lady? Please think before you click. Is she the same? They are saying no, it's not the same. Type. This is a typical example of an imposter. Why this is the ID, let's say, and this is the actual lady that is in front of you. Have you ever used a, a passport, your passport or your ID and going for your bank and you are dressed and your hairstyle is exactly like your passport? Would this happen really in real life? No way. Unless you are an imposter, you want to give the impression that that's me in the picture. So here they are not the same. And if you look carefully at the ears, you can see a flat here and compared to a pointing part. There are other differences, but this one was the main one. Are they the same? No, they are not. Actually, I'll, uh, I'll skip the faces and go to a cosmetic surgery. A cosmetic surgery. Just look at those pictures before and is this the same lady or this is before or after surgery? Type. How about this guy? How about this guy? How about this? Or this? Or this? This shows you people before and after surgery and how they can change. However, if you, I mean, if you do this surgery, um, like what happened in, in China, uh, those ladies and men went to uh, South Korea for cosmetic surgery, 
in the borders back, uh, they were actually, I mean, they didn't allow them into the country because they don't like the ones on the passport. So they had to take a certificate from the hospital about that specific surgery, and they were instructed to get new ID cards and passports. One technique using el, uh, el masks. Here, this is one mask that was used in one armed robbery case. And actually, this was caught in a van after someone ran from uh, police. Here, we can see this guy. As you can see, he's a young Asian guy. And he looked like this on an airplane while using his uh, this mask. Another case, I'll skip the video, go to the here. This guy used a black mask and he went into a bank, armed robbery. The police all the time were looking for an African American. Then it turned out you know, he was white and he was using a black mask. Another case, this person showed on CCTV cameras in a bank in the US. He looks very old, white male. It turned out actually he was an African American and using a white uh, male mask. So you need to keep this in mind. And this is, this mask cost around 700 US dollar. And actually you can order it online from a Los Angeles uh, company. El fantasy documents, those documents, they do exist, but they bear the names of imaginary states countries that do not even exist. For example, like those countries. I'll show you some examples. World passport, maybe you've seen this before. UNO, for example, diplomatic passport. Another example, this is from the inside. Those passports have no whatsoever value. They are for fun only. This is why they call them fantasy passports. El camouflage passports on the other side, those actually, here, let's look here, old name and the new name. There are certain countries who at a certain time change their names as a country, like British Guyana, now it's Guyana. British Honduras, now it's Belize. So if you have a passport from British Honduras, that's not a genuine legal passport because they changed their name. So camouflage passports are passports that actually, they carry the name of the old name of certain countries. One example is this one. British Honduras passports or cards, different types of cards. Those are called camouflage passports. Then we have other fictitious documents. For example, this ID card. It was never issued by any government agency. They bear the name of an existing state or organization, but do not correspond to any existing real document for that country or international uh, organization that is mentioned on the document. Those are actually fictitious uh, cards. Hello. If someone presents uh, an ID to you, for example, like this one, if someone presents an ID, uh, ID sorry, how can you verify it? El ID cards, they have certain security features similar to the passports, but, but very less compared to the passports. However, there are certain tests you can do to verify if it's genuine or not. The first one, how rigid is the card? How tough is the card? You merely snap it, don't overdo it, you'll break it. Just snap the card, see how tough it is. This is number one, as you can see in the photo. Also, always look at the edges of the card, the corners. Are they half a circle or square? If they are half a circle, fine. If they are square, chances they have been laminated and they have been cut. Try to feel the front side and the back side of the uh, card. Look for any bumps, irregularities. This might indicate the, uh, an extra uh, lamination has been added or also traces of tampering. The last thing, look at the corners of the card. Is it easy to peel the card or not? Especially in lamination. Because a genuine card is not an easy card to actually 
uh, to be peeled. Uh, and actually, yeah, one one last slide about passwords being sold online on the deep dark web. Here, identities, passwords, social security cards, and other documents are sold on the deep dark web, and those are the prices. You can see here UK passport scan, physical counterfeit passports. Uh, we have different types of passports and uh, counterfeits and forgeries here, and you can see the prices here. Unfortunately, this is an alarming uh, challenge for uh, even law enforcement and for financial institutions, but on the deep dark web, everything is happening, and this is one item that is being offered for uh, sale. Also, another, another uh, something to share with you, you know, cyber criminals are offering training services. They will teach you about fraud, how to defraud financial institutions, 10 models, interactive guide, and the practical exercises. And all you have to pay is 579 US dollars. I was saying, do they offer certificate at the end or no? <laughs> yes. <laughs> With CB points. <laughs> CB points. Uh, I think we're done and thank you all for attending and for being patient with us all this time and hopefully this was beneficial uh, to all I welcome any questions you might send to Iyad and uh, it was very nice to uh, to be with you and hopefully you are feeling now like this now I get it and I can detect counterfeits and forgeries thank you all thank you for your time such an amazing session, you know, like usually our session when they are around 50 minutes, this session is two uh, hours and 50 minutes. So, so thank you for this amazing session. The feedback is wonderful. Everyone is super happy. They say this is the, one of the best sessions they attended where they gain really valuable knowledge. Thank you. Thank you. And thanks to all.